Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. I'm reading from the English, uh, uh, simplify, uh, English version. Okay? Uh, are there any Englishmen here? Any Englishmen here? Awesome. Yeah. You're not from Australia. I was looking from afar. I thought you're from Australia. So, but you look more posh than any Australian. So, and I guess, you know, <laughs> I guess you're... Any, any, any other Englishmen here? There's no Englishmen here? Uh, American here? No? Okay, no more Ameri- American Indian, no? <laughs> okay, let's, let's go. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write the words of him who has the seven spirits uh, and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then when you receive what you received and heard. It says there, go back to what you heard and believe at first and hold to it firmly. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not sold their garments. And they will walk with me in white for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit uh, says to the churches. It says that the one who conquers will be clothed in white garments. Let me be a doctor, approach this the way doctors approach it. Um, one of the biggest adjustments I've had when, uh, uh, when I was in Australia is going to the doctors. Because sometimes some of the doctors there, they, uh, I'm not too sure because I'm so used with, with, with uh, our doctors in Malaysia that you can sit down and they will ask you nicely, they will chat with you. Is that what you do, Rayma, with your, with, your, with your patients, Rayma? Do you sit down and chat with them and ask them nicely? The doctors, many doctors in Australia, so I prefer either an Indian doctor in Australia or a Filipino doctor in Australia because I feel they know what I'm, what I'm going through inside of me. Because sometimes I sit down and an Australian doctor says, so what are you feeling? Um, and then I was still talking, he already uh, uh, prescribed me a medicine. I said, I said, I paid so much for this. And, I'm, and you've already prescribed a medicine. How do you know what I'm feeling? And, 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 and you know, you sit down to an Indian doctor and say, so what are you feeling? So he said, oh, so this thing and this thing, do you feel like this? They will check you so well. Uh, and then they, will, they will talk with you and then, you know, you get a bit of a chat. And, you know, that, that other doctor prescribed you the same medicine But I felt that it was not effective. But the other doctor who chatted with me, prescribed me the nice medicine, I think the moment I I, I put the tablet in my mouth, I felt healed. You know, there is something about about that kind of condition. I had a big adjustment on that because because we're we're so used here. And I I remember because because I I think the Australian um, health system, if you don't have a private health insurance, you will have to wait for three years. And then in the emergency, I remember first time, uh, first one week that I had, my daughter had a gastro. They call it gastro, like a bit of a, uh, you know, you're vomiting and, uh, and, and, and things like that. I think because, uh, and, and uh, the first time that we were there, you, you know, we, we have to rush my daughter. You know, that's my daughter. She can't be sick. So I, get, I got very shocked. I rushed my daughter, sent her to the clinic, and, and, uh, and then the clinic said, go to the hospital. And then we went to the hospital, waited in the emergency room for about three hours. Yes. And the moment they want to check my baby. They said, oh, well, when did it start? Last night. Oh, wait for 24 hours. Just be patient a bit. <laughs> oh, uh, now I wonder why they put there in every Australian hospital that uh, aggression to nurses are not allowed. <laughs> that moment, I, 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 without the Spirit of God, I think I would have done some aggressive things. Uh, they would have kicked me back to Malaysia. Uh, because, because you want something that you waited for three hours and all you, need, you can hear was, just be patient. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. I think, no, she is not all right. And that, that was like, I was, I was that, at that point, but the, the Spirit of God just talked to me and I just prayed for my daughter. So you just, you just pray for him. But, but what I was just trying to let you know, that let's just approach the Scripture this morning by looking into, into uh, the, how the doctors would say. So, uh, how, uh, so the first thing that we need to look at the condition of the Sardis church. Okay, it sounds like sardine church, but it's, uh, it's the condition of the sardis church. Um, some of you love sardines, you might be uh, hungry by now. 
and, and, and to the angel of the church in Sardis, write the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Among the seven letters, none is as harsh as scathing than the letter to Sardis. There, are, uh, there is not a single compliment among the, in the church of Sardis beside its reputation. And when you look at that, you know, uh, 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 let, let's, let's just look further down uh, with, with, with the background of the church of Sardis. Are you still with me? Uh, I, I'm going deeper a bit. Uh, I'm going deeper a bit. Is that all right? Can I, can I just go deeper a bit? And uh, I just sense that we need to just dig some backgrounds before I started uh, talking about what we need to know. So the church of Sardis is that it is the southeast from Hermes Valley. It, it, it is, it is uh, the capital of the ancient kingdom of Lydia. And it is known to be the dwelling place of the kings. It is an impregnable fortress. It is, it is a fortress. You know, it, it says there that the ten good men could defend the city of Sardis, uh, Sardines from any army of thousands. Uh, and seven of them could be taking a nap. That's what they say. Sardis was known for its great wealth and may have been the earliest kingdom. To, to use minted coins. In, it is rich with natural resources like gold dust, on the river and water supply. Wow. This is a place for women. Imagine that you will be bathing with gold. Imagine like showering like that and then, oh, I shower with gold. Well, see, this is the supreme place for women. And, and, um, and uh, it, it's, it's just, it, they, they have this idiom called um, uh, as rich as crocious. It acknowledges the fact that the king of Sardis was, uh, has unlimited riches. And um, if you remember, how many of you know that, that uh, story, the Midas touch? How many of you have heard the word Midas touch? Everything turns into gold. That is the mythology that started because of this king. Because this king is that extremely rich. So, so, so God was just saying, uh, to, to, uh, to looking at this, um, you know, it, was, it is also the center of worship of uh, the, the, the uh, deity called Artemis. They have the ability to bring the dead to life. So it's, it's, a, cult, uh, it's a cult. There is there's this thing that if you die, you will become alive again. So now I'm giving you a bit of background. Are you all right with history? How many of you hate history? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> uh, uh, now, what I, what, why am I talking about uh, the background of the church of Sardis? Because, because from what God is saying, that the church of Sardis has form, but without substance. Now, I'm trying to send this message to everyone here because I, I, I just want to encourage us that if we want a church, a conquering church, we, uh, we need to look at what is wrong with, with this church because there is form without a substance. In reality, many churches now except us, amen? Look at the person, not our church. Tell the person, not our church, not our church. There is a growing phenomenon right now of the doing, you know, I love amazing worship. We have that this morning, right? I love excellent worship. But so, a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of churches right now are rising up and they have the form. You know, everyone is beautiful, everything is correct, everything is right, but there was no substance you know, it's very, very nice nowadays. It's nice. You, you can hear messages from all over the world. How many of you download? I download messages from all over the world. But the thing is that God is looking for not just uh, form, you know, some, some sort of form. What is form without substance? Let me just talk more about it. <clears throat> the stage is very far. So it has to say that you have the name, you are alive, but you are dead. The, the Word of God says here that in Greek, the word alive means zoe. It's the absolute fullness of life. Yeah, the definition of Zoe is that to live, to breathe among the living, to enjoy real life, to have true life and worthy of the name, active, blessed, endless in the kingdom of God. So, so it, it means to say uh, that, that God is saying, um, that, that literally God was saying to this, to this church is that, hey, you look like alive, you look alive, you breathe, you shower in the morning, but you have no life. How many of you sometimes identify with that? 
Please don't raise your, raise your hand. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to tell and emphasize this morning is that some, uh, what, what God is saying is that this church of Sardis is that, is that, is that it is so-called, it has everything that a church will always have. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. So some of you are like looking at me. Um, one of the things that I realize with, with a lot of uh, what is happening right now all over the world is that there's less and less of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our churches. You know, when I talk about form without substance, sometimes we can do everything, but one of the things that is getting missing nowadays is the power of the Holy Spirit. You know when the power of the Holy Spirit is missing in a church? People are just focused on how beautiful the church service looks, how nice the church sermon is, that the pastor should never offend the church people. That, that the pastor should always be nice. You talk about good things and great things. I, I love that. But the thing is that we are called to tell the good news and the good news has truth in it. Look at the person right next to you. Tell to that person, I will not be offended this morning. <laughs> okay, so, so but, but what is happening with this, with this form without substance is that, is that we, there is a manifestation of, of spiritual stuff, but there is nothing in there. It was a facade. It was an empty show. It, is, it has no inner things in it. Um, can, can I tell you a story about this kampung man, first time, uh, jungle man, first time going to, to the city? And uh, this, this, uh, this jungle man, uh, he, he went to the city and then uh, looking around for things to buy. So, so when he saw one thing, he said, oh, he saw a mirror for the first time. He saw a mirror. And when he saw a mirror for the first time, he took the mirror and he said, oh, you Macam pak saya lah, you know, and uh, this is this is this is this is dad lah, you know. He thought that's a picture of his dad. So he looked at the mirror, and then he put back the mirror. He put back the mirror to to um, uh, uh, t took it back home, and then put it in his small shed where he keeps all his tools because he's very worried. Because if if his wife sees that uh, sees that mirror that has the picture of his dad, uh, the wife will be so upset because the wife doesn't like his dad. So, so he, he hides it. So every morning before he would go fishing, so he would go inside the shed and then he would look at the mirror and say, oh, yo, look at my dad. And then, and then come out again. And this, he's very ulu, you know. So he just, he has no idea what is going on. So, but the wife became very suspicious. And he was, the wife was just, hey, what is this uh, man doing every morning going inside there and very, very long some more? And then one time the, the wife was sneaking, so the, le the, the husband left. And, and uh, she said, she said I, oh, this, this, this man has something. You know, that, so, so she went there and, and then went into the, into the shed and then she saw the mirror. And then she, she looked at the mirror and, said, and, and, and looked closer at the mirror. Ha! Ah, this is the woman that is cheating me. Uh, so uh, she she thought it was the woman, you know. <laughs> the, 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 so the, the uh, you, you, you know some people are just born delusional. How many of you have met delusional people? I've met a lot of delusional people. They have no idea who re who they really are. You know, just watch American Idol. How many of you watch American Idol? I watch American Idol. This this delusional people. Uh, you don't watch American Idol here? Do you watch? Uh, Malaysian Idol? <laughs> well, we, 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 don't, we don't have much of that. I, I, I feel so sinful now because I, I felt all of you only watched that, that you know, what, what was that, uh, uh, the Christian movie there? Uh, what was that Christian movie, Pastor? God is not dead. You know, so I feel like I'm a sinner here now. Lord, I repent in Jesus' name. So I watch American Idol. And one of the...